Good morning dear students. Welcome back to online learning classes. In April, we already completed lesson number 1 and 2. Today, we are going to start our third chapter, Fibers. Where do our clothes come from? So, let's start. Here are some objectives. First, we will discuss the introduction part. Then, why do we wear clothes? History of cloth making. Definition of fibers, types of fibers that is natural and synthetic. In natural fibers, we will discuss in detail about cotton and jute. First, introduction. As we all know, there are varieties of clothes are available in the market. Have you ever wondered from where these clothes are coming? Who is making all these clothes? What type of material they are using for making clothes? As we all know, human beings use all sorts of clothing depending upon weather conditions, occasion and professionalism. Okay, like humans, we are having a need of cloth. Okay, depending upon weather means we are using different type of clothes during summer, different type of clothes in winter, in rainy season and occasion like parties and different occasions professionalism means surgeons are using different kind of clothes police persons are using different kind of clothes okay now how these clothes are made as i said these clothes are made from fiber now see why do we wear clothes there is a basic one answer is not there there are many number of answers for this question. The most important reason is that clothes protect our bodies from adverse climatic conditions such as heat in summer and cold in winter. When we cover our bodies with clothes, we are also protected from insect and dust. In schools, students are required to wear school uniforms. Uniformity means it brings identical and uniforms are must for school students to recognize from which school background they are as well as for soldiers and some professions like the, uh, nurses, surgeons and many more. Example, high altitude units wear white uniforms for camouflaging. It means some soldiers which are staying in high altitudes their uniforms are made with polyester filling which not only protects them in extremely low temperatures at high altitudes but also provides camouflaging means to uh, help them to hide so that they are not spotted by enemies in the snow traffic policemen wear uniforms with reflective surfaces which make them easily available Okay, or easily visible against the dark road, especially at night. In other areas, soldiers use olive green uniforms. So, you, I hope you all know why do we need, uh, why do we wear clothes, and why do we need it? Next, history of cloth making. As early men started agricultural activities, he learned the method of making ropes by braiding and twisting together thin, thin and long grasses. With the help of these grasses, he started weaving also. Okay, flexible twigs of plants to make baskets for their purpose. By suitably weaving, okay, means they are weaving the twigs of the plant for making baskets and using them further. Uh, as well as these baskets are also used in the modern times. By weaving ropes in the same manner, he could make mats and there are many things which are made by them during the ancient period of time. As the time passes away, we started making different kind of clothes like with the help of hand spindle it, it, it is also called as takli and charkha charkha you all remember Gandhiji were using uh, was using this one 
a charkha or a spinning wheel is a device for spinning thread or yarn to make clothes further we will discuss what is thread or what is spinning uh, yarn okay this is the hand spindle you can see it here with the help of this hand spindle people are weaving the clothes okay and making fabrics or clothes this is the hand spindle as well as charkha is given here in the picture now what is fiber yarn and fabric there is a huge confusion uh, every year students are having what is fiber what is yarn and what is fabric see first of all fiber the thinnest and hair like structure okay hair like substance with uh, that is basis of all yarns and fabric yarns are also known as thread okay suppose when you take out any cloth okay and start uh, rub, uh, rubbing it with any sharp object you will find small small threads and after rubbing uh, this thread you will find out a uh, very thin structure or thin strand like a hair is known as fiber okay then yarn yarns are basically the fibers which are twisted together means a thread which are made of fiber okay then fabric fabrics are the material which are made from yarn or thread actually it is made by weaving knitting or kneading okay so i hope you all know what is the difference between fiber yarn thread or fabric and clothes okay fabric means clothes yarn means thread don't confuse between this word terminologies let's start with fibers you all know what are fibers a thin strand thinnest and long strands of the fabric which is a very thin like a hair there are basically two categories natural and synthetic natural two plant sources are available from which we can made fibers and two animal sources from which we can made fiber then synthetic are there are many types of synthetic fibers out of this hundreds of synthetic fibers are available in the market which is also called as man made fibers when we mix the two categories together we get something called a blend best of both the worlds types of fibers natural synthetic so types of fibers fiber categories there are two of two types natural and synthetic natural are which we obtained from natural resources like plants and animals whereas synthetic fibers are manufactured by chemical process in factories and these are also called as man made some examples of synthetic fibers are rayon nylon polyester okay next next one is synthetic fibers these are the examples rayon nylon polyester acrylic and polyester is also divided into tyrolene and pet as i said this fibers are synthesized in laboratory uh, that's why they are called as man made or synthetic fibers out there are so many in fact hundreds of synthetic fibers are there which we also called it as blend next in natural fibers let's start first one cotton fibers now the scientific name of the cotton plant is gossypium hirsutum this name is already given in your book you can check out this plant it uh, its leaves is resembles just like chinar or maple leaves okay and its flowers look very much like pink mellow flowers that grow in swampy areas this cotton is soft fluffy staple fiber that comes from cotton plant each fiber is made up of 20 to 30 layers of cellulose 
coiled like springs cellulose as i said this is a, it is a kind of carbohydrate sugars which are present in the cell wall of a plant next the when the cotton ball or seed case is opened the fibers dry into flat twisted ribbon like shapes and become kinged together and interlock now what is cotton ball see here let me show you what is cotton ball these are the cotton balls okay from uh, in which all the fibers are present this cotton ball contains a uh, seeds okay seeds which uh, from which from where our cotton fibers are producing you can see here cotton ball lemon size after maturing this fibers are burst out and then we will get our fibers which are white snowy in nature seeds of cotton fibers are afterwards removed when the plants are harvested now let us see here characteristics of cotton fibers or products why we are preferring cotton fibers as compared to synthetic fibers cotton is the most important of all natural fibers some qualities of cotton that make it deal for making clothes are it is very comfortable to wear especially for summer season whatever clothes we are wearing it rub against our skin and it creates the kind of friction or heat okay when we are wearing this cotton fibers this frictions are not created as their fibers are very soft in nature so we will not feel heat when we will wear this during summer seasons it is natural cellulosic fiber made from cotton ball it absorbs water and breathes it is very slow to dry that's why we are not uh, referring this fiber cotton fibers or cotton fabrics during rainy season because it is very slow to dry it resists static electricity it means a kind of friction that i said with whenever we are wearing any uh, clothes it rub against our cloth and creates the kind of heat or friction that is static electricity build up which will not happen when we wear cotton cotton clothes it wrinkles easily and can withstand heat uh, detergents and bleach about 20% uh, stronger when wet than dry will shrink under treated can be damaged by mildew can be damaged by prolonged exposure to sunlight as whenever we are keeping clothes outside for a long time in sunlight it removes staining or coloring from the um, fabric long staple cotton such as supima pima egyptian and sea island can be woven into smooth almost silky fabrics cotton has good moisture absorbing quality as we are wearing this during the summer season it absorbs maximum quantity of our sweat that's why which makes this fabric soft and comfortable to wear cotton cloths can be worn close to the skin because it is good in resisting electricity it is having the ability of water to penetrate right to the core of the fabric which makes it easy to remove dirt from cotton garments these are the properties of cotton fibers now we will talk about cotton fibers from field to factory a good crop of cotton needs a long sunny growing season and moderate rainfall black soil and alluvial soil are suitable for growing cotton plants height of this plant is grow uh, is growing up to 3 to 6 feet and generally harvesting begins from october time okay it is planted between may sep and september in different parts of the country seedlings or germination appear after soaking the seeds about 5 days after planting the seeds the first flower buds appear after 5 to 6 weeks and in another 3 to 5 weeks these buds become flowers the flowers are generally white or yellow in color and turn red or pink just on the second day
each flower falls after three days means the life of this cotton flower is only three days leaving behind a small seed pod known as the ball cotton ball which are of lemon in size which is green in color you can see in the first picture cotton ball each ball contains about 30 seeds and up to 5 lakh fibers of cotton the ball slowly grows into the size of walnut turning brown and about 10 weeks after flowering it splits open or burst out as the ball burst the raw cotton fibers burst out this cotton fibers are the hairs that grow on the surfaces of cotton seeds gradually this fibers dry up in the heat of the sun turning fluffy and white as snow now is the time for their harvesting mostly cotton is hand picked this is the best method of obtaining fully grown cotton while the unwanted material trash like leaves and the remains of the ball are left behind a crop can be picked over a period of up to two months as the balls ripen in the next video we will discuss about cotton fibers how we will make this fibers to fabric in the factory or in the handloom okay thank you before starting our next video i want to show you a clip of a video relating with this cotton let's watch that video imagine it's a bright sunny day and the temperature seems to be rising gradually what kind of outfit will you prefer while going out in the sun light and soft cotton clothes that's what i would choose same holds true for furnishing we would prefer soft and comfortable bed sheets and pillow covers made up of cotton Many such amazing applications make cotton the most integral part of our lives and also the first choice among other fibers. So where does the story of cotton begin? It begins from these soft spongy bowls seen on the cotton plant. Let's get started with them. The cotton plants require a lot of sunshine and a typically tropical climate with medium rainfall. Once the cotton bowl, which is the fruit-like structure containing the cotton fibers matures, it bursts open and the snow-white cotton fibers are exposed. These bowls are collected and drawn into yarns. But wait, don't you think we need to separate the seeds and the soft fluffy part first? Well, that can be carried out either manually or these days mostly with the use of machines. The process of separating the seeds and the fibers is called as ginning. Once ginning is successfully carried out, the fibers are taken for the next step. The next step is spinning. What do we mean by spinning? It's simply the process of making yarn from fibers. Remember the series? Fibers make up yarn and yarn makes the fabric. So fibers are the naturally occurring threads. These need to be drawn into long and continuous filaments. These long filaments are the yarns and these yarns are the ones that are woven into fabrics. So spinning is the process where the threads are converted into yarns. But how is this done? If you take a cotton thread between your palms and press it gently by rolling it this way, what you get is a slender long filament like structure. This is nothing but yarn. We know that there are tons of threads that are spun into yarn every day. But if this is how spinning occurs, then imagine the amount of effort needed to make yarn out of so much of cotton. How is it done then? Of course, there are machines which help us do that. In countries like India, since many years the traditional equipments like charkha were used. However, with the advancement in the field of technology, newer machines to spin the threads into yarn are now available. With this, we complete the first major step of cotton collection and spinning the thread into yarn. 